We as humans have an innate desire to fit into boxes, almost like cats, you could argue. Our souls reflect onto others our family, history, and culture, and by comparing these things, we sort ourselves into communities and band together with people who have similar ideologies and personalities to create metaphorical pr protective towers where we shield ourselves from everyone unlike us. Those metaphorical concrete skyscrapers are labeled with the communities we typically separate ourselves into, LGBTQ+, AAPI, POC, male, female, Republican, Democrat. The word ally strings these communities together, forming paths and bridges that uphold our society. Without these bridges, some buildings begin to tower over others, shading smaller communities from the light. Just imagine a world without boundaries, a world that is not divided by nation, religion, social class, or gender. This society exudes safety and acceptance. There are only open spaces and everyone mingles from community to community safely. A world like this is the ultimate goal for mankind and yet without allyship, we are doomed to living in our current world with secluded, divided communities without innovation or progress. The word ally is seen on the daily in recent times. Tacked along with words such as community, heritage, and equality, plastered on Instagram infographics in bright, bold font. Think about it. Just over the last year, because of these things, we've become aware of issues like police brutality, um, anti-Asian American violence, and the Israel-Palestine conflict. Shocking statistics and harrowing anecdotes follow persuasive text about how we can be allies, smash the patriarchy, and educate ourselves about the myth of white supremacy. Allyship on social media, however, doesn't always have the intention it needs to make true change. The list of current societal issues that demand allyship appear to be endless, and it appears that our world never will and never can change for the better. Division between classes, genders, and races restrict our world from becoming a perfect one. Such boundaries bring hate and violence, which have become the norm for our everyday life. In the midst of this chaos, is it even possible to have hope for a world without these boundaries? How do we construct those bridges between communities that I mentioned earlier? Seasoned speaker and writer Chimamanda Adichie's TED Talk on the dangers of a single story explores this very notion that emotional violence sparked by a fear of racial differences is caused by a lack of knowledge. In her talk, she explores the negative aspect which one-sided or incomplete stories have on people's perspectives. How the refusal to accept any truth about people's experiences beyond the stereotypes that we are presented with limit groups from connecting as true equals. She proposes that emotional violence and domination are a direct result of the simple unawareness of how diverse races, genders, and orientations experience life differently. The problem spawns several microaggressions, which she alludes to in personal anecdotes. She says, quote, My roommate had a single story of Africa, a single story of catastrophe. In this single story, there was no possibility of Africans being similar to her in any way, no possibility of feelings more complex than pity, no possibility of a connection as human equals. And so completing the story is necessary, developing perspectives that expand beyond our own experiences. For time and time again, we see how diverse groups of people face diverse problems. Not everyone has to worry about where their next meal will come from, or whether their house will be bombed mercilessly the next day or not or whether they will be able to pass that interview just based on how they look or their sexual orientation. We know that vulnerable religious, racial, and gender minorities are unfairly subject to more suffering on top of the problems that are faced by the majority of the world. 
they have to deal with issues that are that man and society imposes on them. For example, lack of representation, lack of um, opportunity, and um, prejudice. All because our system today is based on a dominator rather than partnership model. Rianne Eisler's cultural transformation theory proposes that civilization was once based on a partnership society until it chaotically shifted to what is now a dominator society. In today's dominator society, certain groups and communities use their birth-given privileges and power to suppress com certain smaller communities, which in turn increases their own power and privileges. For example, 78% of employees who responded to a Harvard Business Review study stated that they work in workplaces that are not diverse in leadership positions. Because of this, women are 20% less likely than straight white men to be recognized for their accomplishments. People of color are 24% less likely and LGBTQ plus people are 21% less likely. It is clear how the exclusion of diverse communities hampers innovation and recognition for smaller communities. As I've said before, several of these issues can be addressed by allyship. However, a genuine version of this is often drowned out by what is commonly known as performative activism. In performative activism, which is very popular nowadays, certain groups overcompensate in protecting and fighting for their allies. And under the pretense of acting to help others, one voice tramples over the very people that they are trying to help, often resulting in nothing more than an ego boost for their own consciousness. For one, creating true allies out of the people around us begins a domino effect that begins to shift the cogs and screws that make up today's society, eventually being able to change the whole society from a dominator back to a partnership type. Finding allies rather than enemies in one's surroundings makes for a proper, prosperous partnership society. If communities learn to just pick each other up rather than picking each other apart, we would create a stronger unified front in facing issues. We must be allies for each other today with genuine intentions, being careful being careful to amplify, but not speak over or advo to advocate for the true feelings of those who are in need. We cannot claim to be allies for one another while acting only to help ourselves, nor can we decide what is best for others that drown out their true will. We can find wisdom that leads to this genuine allyship through the Buddhist com concepts of interdependence. Tibetan Buddhism teaches its followers to practice meditation with interdependence, to remember the importance of learning to develop compassion for all sentient beings. It preaches to stop the separation of an us and an other by recognizing how each group and community is dependent on another. Embracing interdependence will allow us to automatically lean into inclusivity, into compassion, and to start considering diversity as a strength rather than a weakness. Similarly, we must be able to look to other communities and absorb their unique wisdoms in order to improve not only society, but also the natural world. For example, we can look to the world's 370 million indigenous peoples who manage and protect 80% of the world's biodiversity, all due to their traditional ecological knowledge that admits the value of interdependence amongst all living beings, including animals. Recently, as we've begun to dissolve the barrier between the self and the other, we've made significant societal progress. For example, the sharing of knowledge and resources amongst countries in light of the coronavirus pandemic helped distribute the vaccine to countries that needed it, um, showing an example of true allyship. So who's to say that these principles can't be applied going forth in the future? Let's stop defining communities by negative integration, by what makes us different, by how we, by how we are alike. Let's start defining communities by positive integration, 
by what qualities and what experiences we can relate to. So far, youth today have, have been and must continue to be advocates for positive change. By being willing to be educated and educating others, by representing each of our cultures, and by demanding representation and fair treatment for all. So once we overcome a lack of knowledge about the diversity of humans' experiences and begin to accept truth beyond our limiting bubbles, we can connect groups and bond groups together as equals, becoming true allies. By bonding communities with one another, we bring into reality the bridges that I spoke of earlier. By overcoming the narrative of a single story, by enlarging our perspectives to include a variety of experiences, and by allying, allying with each other with true intentions and looking to interdependence, we can uplift our most vulnerable and provide a level stage where no one is left in the shadows. So let's create a world devoid of hatred, violence, or discrimination between communities. Let's create a perfect world without these boundaries. Thank you.